Hallelujah. Wow. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, great God of creation, we gather to encounter you. Nothing else is going to satisfy us but an encounter in whatever way, however that looks like for each of us individually. As we've already heard from leaders today, everybody is dealing with something. Family, finances, health, relationships. And Lord, we, we invite you in to these situations. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving. We enter into your presence with thanksgiving. And so, Lord, we enter in because we want an encounter with you. I'm getting, I'm, I don't know, I'm getting another signal. So this one's not working. Well, why don't we just take it off and I'll just use this. Is that okay? Oh, no. Whatever you want. Whatever I Look, whatever, whatever I want. Is that working mic? Do you have a hand mic? Whatever, whatever you want. No, the hand mic is fine. You're good, okay. You're good. So we're good? You're good. Whatever you want. All right. Lord, we thank you for the encounter. And Lord, I want to pray for everybody that we represent. You represent parents. You represent children. You represent siblings, brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts. You represent neighbors and friends. Because I'm just sensing in my spirit God's heart for all of them. And God's heart to bring them in. Jesus cried, the harvest is white, ready, but workers are few. Lord Jesus, great God of Israel, I'll bless your people here today. Bless them with healing. Bless them with deliverance. Bless them finances. Open doors in business for them. Open doors of revelation to them. For a flow of income to increase even a hundredfold, Lord. Yeah, amen, expand your territory. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. You can be seated if you like. I'm standing. You can stand. It's okay. You know, I really love you. I want, you know, I minister and have over the years ministered in lots of churches and many places, which was actually a testimony that I can share with you Similar to what Pastor Mario, when God called him, he had no idea what he was doing. This is true for just about all of us who are called. Follow me. Where? I'll tell you when you get there. <laughs> no, but I really want to know. I don't care what you really want. The issue is what I really want. Now that the first decision is. And this is really important for all of us because so many times we are hindered to taking the next vital step because we're taking a step back to see whether we will like it or not. This is really important for you to understand because Jesus is not in the do you like it business. He's in the pick up your cross, deny yourself, follow me. Because unless and until you take that step of that step of humbling yourself in your heart, surrendering and saying yes to him, you never can enter in. You just can't enter in because he's the door and he's saying this is the way. And so many people say, well, I don't want to go that way. And he's saying, you don't understand that if you want to be my disciple, that is my student, if you want to be a student in my class, or from that Hebraic Jewish perspective, if you want to be one of my Talmudim, my students, I can't teach you if yourself is rising up in what you want and what you like 
and what you're comfortable with because those things are now off the table to, as an entrance exam. We've all taken entrance exams for whatever. And you've got to pass the exam to get into the class. And the first exam question to you is, will you pick up your cross and deny yourself? And I want you to know this is the way for everybody. If you're going to really follow Yeshua as Lord, because that's who he is, the only way you can follow him is if you take that step of saying to self, no. No, yourself. you're speaking to yourself. How many of you talk to yourself? If your hands are up, we'll have to pray for you because you're lying. So we all talk to ourselves, and, and when you're as married as long as Janet and I are like, what, 44, 45, 500 years, is it? I, you know, you know and, and we're mumbling to ourselves, and she thinks I'm paying attention. And that's like, I'm not paying attention because I don't know who you're talking to, the Lord, yourself, or me, you know what I mean? So there is this in self-talk. We all have internal dialogues, Right? And you have to learn how to speak to yourself as a disciple of the kingdom. This is a really important point to make. Pastor Sam was alluding to it in his call to worship. Because that's what he was doing. He was calling us to worship. And recognizing the realities that we're going through. We're going to worship in spite of. So we have an internal dialogue that says to self. That says to pain. That says to all the negative thoughts and feelings, no. You are not going to determine my destiny. I'm a disciple of the kingdom of God. I'm going in. Lord, I don't understand why. This is not an understanding issue. This is an obedience issue. There's a difference. So I take a step of obedience. And someone says, why are you doing that? I don't know why except that there's a call and I'm going to obey. You are out of your mind. Perhaps so. <laughs> but the mind I want to enter into is not that mind full of negative self-talk. It's the mind of the Lord who promises to renew my mind according to the word of God. And I want my mind to be renewed. All ministry, all the teaching of the word of God is fundamentally about renewing our thinking. So renewing our minds so that revelation can flow. Jesus rejoiced when God revealed things to what he called the babes because they were innocent and naive enough to say yes to the Lord. You get sophisticated intellectuals and all of that kind of that realm of self denies God and denies the spiritual realm. And we don't, and they can't enter in. But Jesus said, if you become like children, not childish, but childlike, we, re, we have to grow up out of our childishness. That was a good place to say amen. Some of you don't like it, but I like being a kid. Because you're still selfish. As you all are parents, I see a lot of young children. Children are all the same. Any country, any culture, any language, they're all the same. Just want you to know, your kid is not special or different. Now, Dr. Morgan, I really liked what you said until that point, because you don't know my little one. I do, sorry. So all children have this dynamic of focus on self. And Jesus says, if you focus on yourself, you can't focus on me. And I can't teach you. I can't train you. I cannot make you a participant in my plans and purposes for your life. Because his plan and purpose for your life is very different than yours. And that's where the challenge is. Pastor Mario was saying, very accurately for all of us, if I had known, he doesn't tell me what's coming. He doesn't. He gives you a blank contract and says, sign here. <laughs> and he calls you, as he did me. And I, you know, when God called me into the ministry, I thought, and <laughs> I thought either I was crazy or he was crazy. And I told him so. 
In fact, I told him some other things when this thing, this call, because this didn't make a lick of sense to me. And I, you know, my excuses were many, including, I know, you really want someone else to be here, but they won't come, so you're choosing me. <laughs> At which point the Lord said, how many have had God speak to you sternly? A couple of you know what I'm talking about. He said, how dare you insult me? If I wanted someone else to be here, they would be here. At which point I repented. I don't want God to be mad at you. You don't want the Lord to be mad at you. Pastor Mary and I, Lee and Mary, we were talking about the severity of God. And how we're, if we're going to be disciples with the living God, the real God, the God of the Bible, you know, you don't want to get him upset. People talk about, you know, wanting Jesus to come. I said, are you really ready for that? Because he is coming and he is not happy. He's coming to rule the world with a rod of iron. That's a whole series of messages. There are, yeah, I'm glad I'm going to be with you for a couple of meetings because there's so much in my heart for you. Because there's so much more that God has for all of us, all of us, all of us. But in order to enter in, underline that word in your thinking, enter into it, experience it. You have to, that self-talk in your head, the I'm not, I can't, I won't, it will never be. You have to be able to internally change the dialogue in your head and say to all of that, I will not let those thoughts and the feelings they create and then the behavior that that generates because it's thoughts, feeling, behavior, think, feel, act, and because you watch yourself make bad decisions. How many of you have made bad decisions? How many of you don't want to admit it? Hello, my name is Howard. I have made bad decisions. So I change how I think which changes how I feel, which changes my behavior. So I look at myself, I look at my resistance, I look at my reluctance, I look at my rebellion, I look at my unbelief. You look at your resistance, you look at your reluctance, you look at your rebellion, you look at your unbelief, and you ask yourself a question. Those thoughts and the feelings they generate are going to create behavior and it's going to take me down a certain path in life, free will. Or I'm going to practice. This is discipleship. In class, in school, we have repeating lessons. And a good teacher is going to repeat the lessons. Amen? This is an important moment for some of you because you're asking, why is this happening again? How many of you are in a loop where it's happening again because you haven't passed the test? So, okay, I'm going around this mountain again. I haven't passed this test. I'm going, I'm going to pass the test now. I'm going to change the way I think about my spouse. I'm going to change the way I think about my body. I'm going to change the way I think about my money. I'm going to change the way I think about my mother, my father, my past. I'm going to change the way I think anything that's holding me back from saying to the Lord, yes, listen to me. The path of freedom is the path of obedience, and the path of obedience is simple. Are you ready? Don't you like simple things? I love simple things. The path of obedience is yes, Lord. Not trying to figure it out. Forget figuring it out. The revelation will come to you. Because you made a step, you said to this, in your internal dialogue in which you s said, no, I'm, I know those thoughts and the feelings they generate, you're very, um, you're very used to them. You're almost, and many uh, people are comfortable with the negativity because it, they believe a lie that stops them from ch facing the challenge, from learning and changing and growing. It's the, I'm not that kind of a person. I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I'm not this, and I'm not that. And you get very comfortable. Yourself gets wrapped up in that, and your identity is wrapped up in that. And the Lord is saying, that's not who you really are. I know who you really are. When the Lord called me, I had no idea that I could teach the Word of God. 
I had no idea that I could move in an anointing of God and the Lord can use me prophetically as he has now all these years. But when I, the Lord was calling me, I was like, not me. Because my identity and my thoughts and feelings up to that point in time had defined my persona. My internal identity looked a certain way. And the Lord said, follow me, I'm going to change you. Because I see who you really are. Please hear me say this. Do not let your self-identity determine your destiny. Give yourself to the Lord and let him give you a new identity based upon his plan and purposes for you. Now this opens up realms of possibility. Realms of possibility. You know, sometimes, you know, on the phone you get these, the, this picture app and things cycle through and you forget you were at this place, you know. And Janet and I were looking some, uh, do you remember this? Pe who are these people? Where were we? Because when the Lord called me, and said certain things were going to happen. When the Lord called Janet, here's this secular Jewish school teacher invited to a Bible study completely contrary to anything of her experience of life. Okay? It was not part of anything she'd ever experienced. And a neighbor invites her to a Bible study and she does complete things out of character and shows up at a stranger's house, comes in, and there's a bunch of people with their hands in the air playing tambourine, you know, singing, and she's thinking, where am I? What is this place? But she didn't walk out because something in her spirit was saying, I know something you don't know. How many of you have heard that song in your heart? Jesus calling you and saying, I know something you don't know. Come on. Well, maybe, I don't know. Or, you know what? I'm going to jump in. God, please hear me underline this for you, sees you differently than you see yourself. Janet had supernatural encounters that night, brought her into faith Things unfolded for her life on another path. And the Lord said to her, when he revealed to her that she was going to marry me, together your ministry will go from Brooklyn to Manhattan to the nation to the world. And she said, well, Lord, should I tell Howard he's going to marry me? And the Lord said, no. That was a good word for a lot of you people. The Lord said, no. When he comes to tell you, then it will come to pass. And a series of events started to unfold. The Lord brought us together. That's another story. Oh, my God. I'm... And um, we fell in love. I'm not, I can't do the details because I, wanna ref, I run a focus on not my story but your story because I'm here for you because there's another storyline for your life. Just one quick testimony along our storyline to help you because I'm pastoring in Brooklyn. So I, 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 you know, I've been, I pastored a couple of churches for about 11 years in Brooklyn and Manhattan. So I understand the work of a local church pastor. And this word is, you know, in the back of my head, your ministry was going to go from Brooklyn to Manhattan, but I had no idea how that's going to happen. So what, listen to Jesus. A new age guru in Washington, D.C. gets born again. He calls Sid Roth, you know, a messianic vision. If you don't know, Sid's a Jewish believer. We've known Sid for years. This newly saved, new age, I guess we could call him a guru. I don't, he probably does not. His name was George. He's probably in heaven listening, Howard. That is not how I describe myself. 
But he was, he was very much a leader in the New Age and different groups. He got born again, called Sid, is there anybody like you in New York? I'm moving back to New York City, to Manhattan. And Sid says, yeah, there's a Jewish pastor in Brooklyn named Howie Morgan. Contact him. So the phone rings. How many of you know that God has a blue department? And things come out of the blue. Special delivery. Blue department, here's something for you. You're going to Pastor Mickey to play the bass tonight. But there's a special delivery from the blue department about to be delivered to you. Phone rings. Says Pastor Howie, yes, my name is George. George Fairchild was his name. He said, I've been told to reach out to, I, 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 I was born again and I need to speak to you. I said, drives, drives in in his nice Mercedes and comes and he starts unpacking all of this new age stuff, charts and books. And so I started mentoring and discipling him. This is demonic. This is godly. This is the Bible. This is the devil. Keep this. Throw this out. Keep this. Throw this out. And we did this for, oh, probably about a year. And he turns to me and he said, you know, this has been so powerful for me. Would you come into Manhattan and teach this to my friends? And I said, aha. This is the moment Jesus saw. Please, because he sees you differently than you see yourself. This is really what God wants to really underline for you this morning. That your identity is going to be renewed and changed if you say, yes, I'll be a disciple in the school of the Spirit and I'll let go, I'll let go, I will surrender. All of those negative, self-defining, self-limiting, I'm not, I can't, I'll never be, all of that self-talk. You've got, to, you've got to release it. This is the pick up your cross and deny yourself moment. Because that's the moment of exchange. That's the moment of encounter. When you say in your heart, in your mind, no, I'm not going to continue thinking like this. I'm going to let my mind be renewed by the word of God. I'm going to believe the information in the scriptures can transform the way I think. Because now I have new ways of thinking. Because, you know, when you first start, well, I don't know how to think about this. Now you're reading the Bible and revelation comes to you. Here's how you think about it. You come to meetings. You become a regular part of the community. And in preaching information and conversations over coffee... In fellowship, somebody says something and bang, it's like Jesus speaking. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You know, they're just having a conversation. This has happened to me and Janet many times. You know, I, I, we're just having a conversation and all of a sudden something, it's, it's like the bell in that person's mind and got rung. Boom. That's the peace I need today. See, in the enemy... You do have, you understand there is a real devil in the world. If you don't believe that there's a real devil in the world, ask Jesus to show you that. But don't call me when you start having kinds of bad experiences. That's why you have pastors. <laughs> Pastor Mario, there's a demon in my living room. When Janet was a new believer, long before anything with us, she called me because Satan showed up in her bedroom. She didn't know what to do. So I'm being a good pastor. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I got this new believer telling me there are demons in her bedroom. I said, well, come over and we'll talk about it. I prayed for her. She went home, gave her some basics in spiritual warfare. Here you have authority over these demons. Don't be afraid for them. Tell them in the name of Jesus, get out. And she began to realize the power in that name like, whoa. So here's, let me, let me expose Satan's tactic to rob you of your inheritance. Because that's all he's really interested in. He doesn't care what you do as long as you don't do the will of God. Go make a million dollars. Go live on a yacht. Go wire. I don't care. What I care about is you becoming a threat to my kingdom. That's what I'm after stopping. 
So I don't care, you know, what sin you get into, what lifestyle you get into. doesn't matter to him. What he's caring about is stopping your identity as a disciple of the kingdom of God coming to fruition, coming to fruitfulness. So that's where the lies come. You're not. You can't. Who are you? Don't go to that church. Stay home. It's raining. It's, you're late. It's tired. Then something rises up and say, yeah, I'm tired, but I'm going. And your body is saying, I'm tired. And you say to your body, shut up. We're going. I really don't want to go. It's raining. I'm hungry. Shut up. Changing the way you're thinking. We're going to worship. We're going to come under the influence of the word of God. I'm coming to be with the people of God. So shut up, we're going. Have you ever dragged your body somewhere? I have dragged my body lots of places. Not so easy to drag her body, that's another. Come on, we're going, I don't wanna go. (laughs) No, that's not true, we're going. But this is common to all of us. Why? Because hear me say this to you. It's golden truth. I'm in pursuit of the prophetic purposes of God for my life. I want my life to fulfill what Jesus has written in my book next to my name. You understand? There's a book of life. There are many books in the Bible. There's the book of tears. There's many books in the Bible. One of them is the book of your life if you say yes. Well, that's a really good place to say amen, beloved. See, so when, I, when I first realized, oh, my God, I have a book of life. It is not the book of life. It's the book of my life and what was written in it. I was a university student in, in Hunter College in, in New York City when I had my encounter with the Lord. And I remember sitting in the auditorium one day as a, a lead, reading my little pocket New Testament for the first time and the parable of the, of the, of the sower of the seed and bearing fruit and but only if you have a good heart. And I prayed, Lord, give me a heart to obey you. And he did. And then I had this thought, what would my life be like if I made Jesus Lord? And then everything in my life went to hell. How many of you know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Hell is a Bible word. Don't be offended. No, I lost everything. Everything that was in my life was taken out of my life because the Lord was saying, this is not according to my plan because I see you differently than you see you. Because I see you preaching and teaching and evangelize and going to the nations and writing books. Whoa! Books that have wings. <laughs> and all the other things that we've, been, that we've accomplished to this point that I look back on and say, this is, this is all miracles. Do you understand that? And this, I'm no different than you. I'm just the guy that said yes. Are you a man or a woman or a young person? It doesn't matter your age. Jesus says to the little children, the kingdom of God is just like them. You want to know what the kingdom is like? Look at kids. And I look at kids. I love being with children. I love the fact that they know how to play with everything, anytime. How many of you know what I'm talking about? They don't need video games. Give them an old milk container, and this is a universe. And it's like, whoa. And we get old and cranky, you know. I'm tired. Shut up. Let's play. That's why I like hanging out with kids. Let's play. Because there is a mentality of creation in their understanding of the world. Oh. You get stuck in yourself. And Jesus is saying, I know who you are. Come on, follow me. Where are we going? I'll tell you when we get there. How long will it take? Don't ask that question. Abraham, Genesis 12, we're following in the steps of the faith of Abraham. Go for yourself. Lech lecha in Hebrew. It was my bar mitzvah portion. Go for yourself. Where are we going? I'll tell you when you get there. How long will it take? You'll find out. Come on. And so this is the same thing, but it starts with a change of your thinking. And it's the same for everybody, so it's doable for you. This is not something far away. It's as close to you as your own mind. It's as close to you as looking inwardly. What am I thinking about the Bible? 
What am I thinking about the church? What am I thinking about the ministry? What am I thinking about my future, my destiny, my work? Let me tell you something. You are not in a prison except you put yourself in there in your own thoughts. If you believe you're in a prison, you will be in prison. And the devil doesn't, listen, Satan doesn't put you in the prison. You put yourself in the prison of your own thoughts and feelings. And he says, I don't have to bother with you. You're already locked up. I can leave you alone. Because you're in the prison of or whatever those thoughts and feelings that um, create certain behaviors. But if you turn to yourself and say, you know what? I'm getting free. I'm not going to live according to my thoughts and feelings. I'm going to open the word of God. I'm going to come to where the word is preached. I'm going to come to be around believers who are also in class. So you show up. How many of you remember the first day of school? Right? You know, it's like, who are these people? Because now there's new classmates and a new teacher, and you don't know if the teacher's really strict. How many of you know that? You judge the teacher by how they looked. How many? I wasn't the only one doing this. And if the teacher cracked a joke, well, I did. I relaxed. I said, okay. At least he can smile. Then you meet other people. This is exactly what church is all about. We're in class together. So now I make friends, right? We sit and we have a coffee and we start talking about the issues of our life. Well, I'm struggling with X, Y, Z. I'm having a problem with whatever the story is. Then you find people saying, yeah, I have the same issue, but here's what happened to me. And I, I have friends and, you know, we, other ministers that I speak to on a regular basis. Same dynamic, just on another level. Right? This is why the enemy says, I've got to stop you from being part of a church. I've got to stop you because I, I don't want you to be with other classmates. I want you alienated. I want you separated. I want you alone and miserable. How many of you know that Satan is a master of making people miserable? That's miserable for you people from Jersey. Because divide and conquer is the plan of the enemy. So I drag myself to the meeting. I sit in a seat and say, Lord, here I am. And then the Lord brings somebody to sit next to you, and it's the perfect person. You know, um, on our trip here, which was an interesting journey, because it took, we were in the Atlanta airport for over six hours because of the rain, and they shut down the Newark airport. So they boarded us, took us off, ah, we'll get up soon, and soon became soon. You know, they lied to you. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> get on the plane, you know, and there was a woman sitting next to me, and, you know, in the first part of the journey, we really didn't talk much. In the second part of the journey, I don't know why, but all of a sudden, this lady starts saying to me, you know, I had an experience that I thought I was hallucinating and I spoke to my doctor because I've discovered it was a near-death experience. She had had a serious medical problem. She died and she stepped into another realm. And she said to me, I'm glad there were no flames. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, this stranger starts telling me this, and I'm laughing to myself. I'm saying, ah, because you never know who you're going to sit next to, and you come to class, you come to church excited, Lord, what do you have for me today? And the devil says, ah, it's just church, you're going to be bored, they're going to preach, you're going to ignore it, the people are there. Rather, no, 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 you don't understand, devil. And I'm sick of you. I'm sick of your lies. I'm sick of your intimidation. I'm not going to let you influence me anymore. I'm going to class. And I'm bringing my notebook. How many of you bring a notebook to class? I used to give out gold stars to everybody that brought it. And people would be upset if they didn't get their gold star. Like the second graders would show up after and say, where's my gold star? I want, I want my gold star. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And it was just a little way to encourage people, bring a notebook, because you never know what Jesus will say to you, that word from God that changes your life. Because one word from God can change your life. But you've got to be in the place of hearing it. 
And we, you know, in, especially now we're inundated, you know, with voices and you know, with smartphones. We're all, all over the world. There are more smartphones on the planet than there are people. It's true. And, the, you know, people are paying attention to the wrong voices because it's clamoring for, for you to pay attention. And I turn it off and say, look, I want to pay attention to one voice. Well, two voices. I have discovered I have a personal trinity. Jehovah, Jesus, and Janet. I'm, I'm, I'm more obedient to two of the three than the third of the three, but I'm learning. Let's just let this settle in a little bit because these truths will set you free if you apply them to your life. If you make an internal switch in your thinking that says, I'm a, I'm a disciple of the kingdom of God. I don't know what that really looks like in the depths of it, but God has a plan for my life and a purpose for my life and a calling for my life that's written down in, my li in the book of my life. I want to find out what that is. Because the only way you'll find it out is if you become obedient and listen, learn to listen, learn to listen, learn to, and listen to the right voices. Let your spirit begin to rise up as a truth detector. Listen to me. Your spirit knows things before you do, and your spirit is smarter than you are. So you learn to listen to your inner voice. You learn to listen to your spirit. And you feed your spirit with the word of God because it thrives. Your spirit thrives on this scripture. This is why the enemy wants to keep the Bible out of churches. And you watch churches become apostate because they deny the authority of their Bible. And Satan loves that because the Bible is the word of God that feeds your spirit. Well, that's a good place to say amen. The Bible gives you new information about how to think, how to think about everything, your spouse, your children, your money, your health, your body, your future, and the Word of God comes alive to you, and it's a sword. It penetrates. It separates. It pierces, and you get used to that. Yes, Lord, I want to learn how to think. Oh, this is good saying, I want to learn how to think like you think. Whoa. Paul talks about having the mind of Christ. So I say to myself, no. I say to Jesus, yes. Simple, deep, and profound, but simple. And it only works in your life, beloved, if you do it. Only if you do it. You can hear preaching from now until the day of your departure. That's your death. And do you no good. There are people who have gone to church for 50 years, heard thousands of sermons, goes in one ear, out the other. What did pastor or elder preach about Sunday? I don't know. God, Bible, Jesus, I don't know. But a disciple is going to go, go back, what did you hear? Now, there's my notes. This is what I heard. When I was learning this, my Melanie was little. She'd sit next to me in church, and I'm taking notes. And one day she whispered to me, maybe she was six or seven, Daddy, pay attention, because I was writing furiously. And I said, I am as hard as I can, but I don't care what he's saying. I care what Jesus is saying. That's the voice I'm listening to. Amen. Oh, that's a very important place to say Amen. Because you're not here to hear from men. You're here to hear from God. And we're just, we're just ve vessels trying to communicate to you what God is giving us for you. But you've got to be able to take it down and then go back and say, whoa. And I have gigabytes now of notes. A 
because there's so much more for all of us. But the only way you'll experience it is if you learn to say no to your flesh and yourself and yes to God and then say, unfold it for me and make yourself a student in the school of the Spirit, being with the believers, being under the Word of God, and being there for other people. It's not just for you to receive, it's for you to give. And then you're amazed when wisdom comes out of your mouth, and someone says, wow, that was really wise, and you go, well, yes, yes, yes. Except you didn't know it until it came out of your mouth, and you're thinking, I better remember that. It was really good. One last testimony, and then we're going to pray about this. I was a new pastor in Brooklyn invited to a mental health seminar. I said, okay, I'll go. And it was a, there was a, a secular Jewish psychiatrist running the seminar about reaching out to the community, which, of course, we wanted to do. So, you know, through the conversation, I shared my testimony you know, who are you? I'm this Jewish pastor. Daughter. And then um, after everybody was gone, he asked me a question. He said to me, why is fornication a sin? And then I watched these words. I heard these words come out of my mouth because I didn't know the answer till I heard the answer. I said, the act of sexual intimacy is the fundamental building block of society. If men and women disrespect each other on that level and use each other as objects, that fundamental building stone of society is broken and we have all of this abuse and all of this rejection and all of this treating one another as merely commodities to use for our own pleasure and all of society breaks down. And I thought to myself, that's a really good answer. And he said to me, that's a really good answer. I didn't tell him I didn't know the answer. But this is just one, one story. And because there are so many stories for you. God wants to, I mean, you go out there with an attitude that says, listen, you walk into your life. Right? You leave here and go into your life with this attitude in your heart that says, I'm a disciple of the kingdom of God. Lord, whatever you want to teach me, through whomever, I am going to learn. This woman on the plane, let me get back to that story. She said to me, you know, she had this out-of-body experience, and I said to her, you know what you need to do? I said, you need to read the New Testament and the words of Jesus from this perspective. And her eyes got big. She said, I never thought of that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And I thought, well, she's on the path now. Now, listen, we're not anybody special. We just try to be obedient. Have I made mistakes? Many. Have I missed opportunities? Many. But I picked myself up. Dust myself off, forgive myself. How many of you know how to forgive yourself? You must be really good at forgiving yourself. You really have to because the enemy will come with that voice of accusation. You're not, you can't, you didn't again and again and again. And then all the other nasty stuff that follows with that. But if you forgive yourself, because Jesus forgives you, I forgive myself Okay, I'm going back to class. Because the enemy wants to take you out of class. But you show up again. No, I'm here. Whatever you want to teach me, Lord. So I go into my life as a disciple for those who can speak to me and those I can speak to. Now things start getting exciting. Like, whoa. How many of you want to live an exciting life? Just a few of you. Hey, lift your hands if you want to live an exciting Not to me. I'm not asking you to lift your hand to me. I can't give you an exciting life. I'm just trying to live my own. How many of you understand that? And I'm trying to help you on the way. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the, the word of God that's alive and active. I thank you for disciples of the kingdom of God gathered in this place. 
I thank you want to take us where we've never gone before, do things we've never done before, and become who we've never been before. Make your word alive in each of us. In Jesus, make your word alive in each of us. In Jesus' name.